How's it going, everybody? It's me, Shane. I'm here to give you another Digimon Adventure 2020 episode review and recap. Today's episode is episode 60, A Place to Return to. So, before we go ahead and get right into this episode, I'm going to please ask you to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate it. Every little bit, bit helps, and I actually really, really do like getting feedback. Uh, one of my uh, subscribers is really, really good about helping me, you know, keep in line with some of the stuff with this show that I tend to mess up because there's so much lore, not just in like Digimon, but there's lore in like animes and other things, video games and that and that nature. And if I'm wrong, I, I would like someone to tell me, you know, that's how you learn, right? So let's go ahead and get right into this. Remember last episode, we had that really good episode with Vikemon by an Olegmon. And everybody's favorite Taishi showed up at the end, right? Right? If you know, you know. Now, this episode, unfortunately, all you uh, people that are tired of seeing Taichi, we're seeing Taichi and Agumon. They're actually walking, and in the distance, we can see Eldoradimon, our old friend from many, many, many episodes ago. Got some notes right here, so just bear with me. <clears throat> and uh, in the distance behind them is, we see the Cloud Continent. Remember, Cloud Continent came into view. The only way that we can, that the forces of darkness could bring back Millennium Mon. Well, it's, it's right there, and Eldorati Mon is, seems like it's trying to make its way on up to it. Uh, Taichi and Agumon see Leo Mon. They, you know, Leo Mon is still not dead. The curse is slowly being broken, guys. I just realized we, this is episode 61, and we're going to 66, 67 episodes. Ooh, there's still time. Anyway, they see Tonkaru and Patamon. They're pushing Eldorati Mon's I guess you can call it foot. This is a, a Digimon that's the same size as a hidden golden city. So they're pushing it. And I guess that's supposed to be doing something. But I digress. Um, they're wondering what's going on. And uh, it looks like more and more of the city that's part of El Mon. Because as he's healing, the city, more, of it, more and more of it's getting repaired. That seems to be the case. I actually remember seeing on the sides of it, this turtle city. Digimon. It looks like there's pools on that side now, so that's pretty cool. Um, and now, all of a sudden, he starts to slip, slide, and he's falling. Both Tonkaru and Patamon, they kind of patting themselves down. And they're just like, whew. Well, Agumon and Taichi reach up to reach Tonkaru, and they say, you know, so what are you doing here? He said, well, uh, Hikari stayed in the forest, and my Digivice let me here. And when he got here, he saw Eldoradimon. Eldoradimon's trying to move on up. And Leomon explains, you know, he's trying to climb the slope, which leads back to the Cloud Continent, which we can see a giant rock formation from the Cloud Continent connecting directly to the Earth. So that floating island is close to falling. So I want you to probably call Knuckles. <clears throat> so, you know, Eldoradimon isn't quitting. Even when he's sliding back and Takaru just made it his point, you want to get home, I'm going to help get you home. And we do need to remember, Takaru does have some history with this Digimon, much like Hikari had with Pedaldramon. Uh It's not on the same level, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, Eldoradimon was freed by Takaru when both Yamato and Taichi had to fight, um, I believe it was Mistmon and also, yeah, it was Mistmon. Uh, that was the only way to get to Devimon. And it was just, uh, it, it, it was, not to get, yeah, to get to, uh, I actually, they had to get there to, to say Patamon, if I believe. It's been, it's been so many months and so many episodes ago. Almost feels like almost a year ago, doesn't it? And, um, while they were, you know, that, that was the bond they shared. So, of course, Takaru and Patamon are gonna try to help this guy out. <clears throat> Meanwhile, um, Komondamon comes in with Pacmon, they brought rope, and there's, a bunch of other Digimon, and we you probably recognize some of them. There's a Kame Mon, there's a Black Goblin Mon, there's the Mucho Mon, that's a purple, so it might be Penguin Mon. There's various other Digimon. I even see Meteor Mon. I really do like what Meteor Mon. It's literally the ultimate version of Gatsu Mon. It's just white with a different mouth formation. And uh, yeah, it's a funny Digimon. I also see Cherry. I think that's Cherry Mon, the little. It's a little bird that has like a bush on its tail. It showed up in like the first season. 
of uh, Digimon Adventure. The very, very first the OG. I just can't remember its exact name. Anyway, off to the side, we see this floating, wrapped up Digimon who looks very familiar to all those who watch Cross Wars. But we'll get into him in one moment. Also, this is Digimon that I literally said when I was watching. It looks like Numamon with a shell on it. And uh, all these Digimon look pretty sad. Tia uh, Taichi brings that up, and Leomon says, well, all their homes were destroyed by Millennium Mon. And we get a nice little flashback of a super giga rage that Millennium Mon did that looked like it would have pretty much killed a lot of people, but it looks like it mostly destroyed a lot of homes. Digimon are probably missing and destroyed too, if we're going to be honest. And a uh, lot Mon is in search of finding these Digimon a new home. Well, then, the Digimon that I said looks like Numamon with a shell is called Kara. Nope, that's the bad translation. It's called Karatuki Numamon. Look at this. Look at this guy right here. Looks like Gary from Spongebob. That's the official artwork. This is from Digimon Frontier. That is actually the first appearance of Kata, uh, Karatuki Numamon. Name, when literally translated, means Shell Numamon. Because uh, Karatuki means with shell. So let me just read this little, read you something about this, you know, champion level Digimon. It's a crustacean a virus and he's from three different fields, so... I won't get, get into that part. <clears throat> this crustacean Digimon, it was a Numamon that made use of its intelligence and found a shell to cover its body in order to protect itself. As a result, while it is slightly more intelligent than Numamon, it in turn grew a cowardly personality. That's funny. <clears throat> and will retreat into its, uh, its shell in a shock at the slightest disturbance. Its defense is extremely high while it is holed up in a shell remaining firm even when it's kicked and stepped on. A special move is hiding its body within a shell and using a shell to do a tackle. It's called Shell's Attack. And then throwing large amounts of poop that is stored within the shell, which is called a Jukutse Unchi. I, when, I don't even know what that, when literally translated, I have no clue what that means. I will probably look that up in my own time. Numamon throw poop, so. Like I mentioned before, we showed up in Frontier. This is the second time we've ever gotten this Digimon in an anime. It did show up in video games like the Card Arena and Digimon World 3, but yeah. Uh, and it's funny that it's cowardly because it says to them, you know, they should probably give up. You know, this is too dangerous for a little boy to be doing all this. And of course, we see Takaru and Patamon. They're still pushing for it. And uh, Taichi and Agumon are like, you know what? We're going to go help now. And Leomon notices Gravimon and as it literally says, hey, could you give us a help? Your name is literally Gravimon. And uh, I will show you Gravimon just because they said, his, they said him by name. It, one of the interesting things I like about this show is while they say a Digimon's name, but until they fully show themselves, that's when we get the, the name at the bottom. Kind of like other animes like Inuyasha or... Uh, or Yashihime, where you hear a person's name, but until they fully show themselves, that's not when you see them. This is what this guy looks like. Now, uh, homeostasis, he who you've probably seen either on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, does lots of drawing and models of Digimon. And he said that this Digimon is 19 feet tall, at least in uh, Cross Wars, which is where Gravimon comes from. Now, you probably see his hands look very papery. That is what, when I first looked at him, I said, why does his feet have hands? That's actually just his body. He wraps himself up and he just hovers in midair. There's actually rocks that are constantly floating around him when he's in that form. And they occasionally crumble and break, probably under the gravity. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just read who he is. He's an ultimate level Digimon. Finally, we have a level for him. Um, he was... Like I said, he was part of the uh, seven death generals in Cross Wars. So let's see what his encyclopedia says. Uh, the general of the Earth God army of the big death stars that's still in there. He is a tactician, has the ability to freely manipulate gravity, and with his ability and has an ingenuity to survey an entire situation and control the course of the battle at will. He was a tactician in the anime, too. The beauty of its plots are even said to be ingenuity as if gushing forth. No idea what that's supposed to mean. So, <clears throat> so it makes sport of an enemy army by 
weaving formulated tactics together and creative schemes. Godby's Digimon account for the majority of its army, which has overwhelming strength in terms of military power. And because it enjoys simulating tactics, it uses the battlefield as its testing ground. It is an investigative Digimon with uh, which continuously to zealously research questions like how many casualties can be produced easily. Ow, that is dark. <coughs> Uh, which tactic lets it listen to a multitude of screams? Wow. What creative scheme will surprise the enemy or ally as they are killed? Jesus. Uh, which method will cause all of the opponents to die without shedding blood? And so on. Uh, has an attack called Octogravity. Because uh, if you couldn't see before. If you couldn't see before. It has eight tentacles. Eight little tentacles right there. So you know, you know I like that. Uh, which manipulates the gravity of the battlefield using its eight tentacles. It controls the opponent's gravity based on the flow of battle and can make them heavier or lighter. Its elasticity extends both of its arms and buries the opponent with its high gravity pressure and pushes the opponent to their compressing limit. Its gravity bang, which is called a mythological bold move, uses the digital world's gravity pressure of... Well, it places the digital world's gravity pressure on Gravimon until it reaches its limit and then detonates into oh, it's like a like a bomb attack, like uh, like Vegeta's uh, final explosion attack. I can okay. I don't remember that happening in the other anime, but it probably did. Wow, uh, self destruction technique. My, of course, it obliterates itself. Although it can regenerate if it waits for many long years, even Gravity Mind doesn't know how long it would take, how long it will suffer until it regenerates. Pretty interesting Digimon, to say the least. And this is our Sundre Digimon that just flies off once Leomon asks, well, can you help? Now, when everyone's pressed against Eldoradimon, they look like ants. And it is just hilarious. In my mind, I'm like, I get this is an anime. I get this is one of the most fantastical fictional animes. Uh, not based on anything. Not slice of life. Not comedy. How are they going to push this thing? Well, Agumon turns into Greymon. He does Mega Flare and does it as a beam, so he's trying to use propulsion. Leomon does his Jokin with the left and does Shin Jokin with the right, which makes a beam. So while everyone is pushing, uh, they're trying to get some propulsion. Even um, Takaru has Patamon turn to Anjimon when he, on his little device, starts spinning and starts glowing. Turns to Anjimon, so now they're trying to push. And you know what? They're tiring out. We get Greymon turning to Metal Greymon at the same time as Angemon. Uh, Patamon becoming Angemon. Really decent music. And uh, the sequences for these are good. I actually just noticed today that Metal Greymon's evolution sequence when the Metal Head comes on doesn't have Machine Tremon anymore. I guess because its full evolution has been realized as War Greymon, there's no uh, hints anymore of that Machine Tremon in them. So... <clears throat> While they're pushing, all the other Digimon are looking and all. You know, we have the Metal Claw that's wrapped around him. We have the rope that's wrapped around him. So, both Leomon and Metal Greymon are pulling while others are pushing. Uh, you know, all of a sudden, you know, he takes a step forward, but then he starts to slide. And Takaru is going to get hurt as well as Taichi. But Angemon comes in, you know, makes the save. And we see Elecmon. He's one of, one of the Digimons down there. Makes a little fist. I don't, it makes a little arc fits. Don't know if he's inspired or just fed up seeing them struggle. Well, now uh, they're going to join and do it again. And this time, Gravimon kind of turns a bit to the side to watch them. He's taking notice. Electmon comes too, says, you know what? I can't stand watching you guys, you know, keep doing this by yourself. I'm going to help you. So they start to push. Another Digimon starting to pay attention to this too. And actually a couple more starting to step forward. And, um... They're giving it their all. El Rodimon starts to move. Now they have others behind. And there's still some that are having doubts. As a matter of fact, if I can remember, I cannot remember the Digimon was Dracomon. One Digimon asked Dracomon, what can all you know you small guys do to help? And he's like, well, I don't know, but I just can't watch someone struggle and not do something. Even the flying Digimon like uh, Sunflowmon, a couple of the other bird Digimon, and some of the armored birds. They're like, man, it'd be easy if he can fly. They come down. They're helping. More people are helping. And they're getting him up there. But the, sto the slope is getting steeper. 
So they're all pushing them, you know, using their force and their momentum, helping El Rayman take the steps. And everyone's, you know, tired, but Takaru's Digivice is glowing brighter and brighter. But, <clears throat> excuse me, but, uh, you know, everyone, they're still trying to move in it, and we're at a standstill here. Um, Takaru starts to glow purple. And as he's going purple, he's moving upwards. Everyone's looking and it's Gravy Monger. Mom pulled him up to his face and said, why are you doing this? You know, you keep failing. Why, why are you even trying? He's like, well, I just can't stand there and let him, you know, he wants to go home. So as long as he wants to keep going, I'm going to keep going with him. And Gravy Mom reminds him, says, you know, it's a, it's a lot of us don't have a place to return to. You know, it's. It's, it's almost like it's being thrown in our faces. It's a fact that we can never forget. You know, we don't have a place. We don't have a home to return to. And Takaru says, you know, well, I don't want to forget that. And Grandma's like, huh? He's like, you know, I have a place to go back home to, too. And then he starts thinking. We see in his mind, he's thinking of uh, when him and his brother were younger and their parents were together. We still don't have a, a clear picture of their faces, which I find interesting. The show is really all about the children, although we did see um, Ty and Hikari's mom. That, that was interesting. But he has the image of them being, he says, actually, there's a home I want, but I can never, ever have again. But that's okay. As long as he, you know, he has a home that's in front of him. So you know what? I know what that feels like to want to go back to somewhere. So I'm going to help him out. And that's a really, Tiger was very, very mature uh, emotionally. As, as well as intelligently, but he's very uh, uh, emotionally mature because to make that connection is 10 times better than our old Takaru, way better than season two of Digimon Adventure, Ta uh, the, the grown up Takaru. God, I hate that. I hate that TK so much. So he tells Gravimon this, and Gravimon, it's a moment of silence for a minute because. You can see Gravemon's just thinking it over, mulling it over. And after a while, he just drops him. Which, Angemon catches him. <laughs> and, you know, suddenly Gravemon's just gone. You know, they look back up, dude is gone. Well, you know what? Now, Takaru's on top of Eldoradimon, giving everybody orders. You know, it's time to move. They're all saying the Japanese version of Heave Ho. I do not remember it at this very moment. Takaru's Digivice is going brighter and brighter with each monstrous step that Elder Ronimon is making that everyone's pushing. And he finally gets over the threshold, over the slope, on the green grass. And it looks like they all did it. Agumon falls down, you know, having been Metal Greymon, he falls down back to Agumon. But all of a sudden the ground cracks and it gives way. Leomon's like, it can't hold its weight. Takaru's still up there and they're about to fall and slide. And, you know, Angemon can't reach him in time. And the, and all of a sudden, the mood, the, the, the rocks start to hover. Uh, the riding mind starts to hover. Takaru starts to hover. And we get the full image that I showed you of Gravimon showing us when they fully introduce him. He's like, I thought you weren't going to give up. You know, let's try to finish this. And interesting thing to note, you can hear the struggle and Eldorani Mon's voice. So while he has this ability to change the weight of things, it's still a strain, especially for a city-sized Digimon. Now, uh, the music is swelling. That familiar Break the Chain music is starting to swell up. Um, Angemon comes in, of course, says he says a thing about being his shining hope. I, I find, I find the the, I find the bond and conversation between those two to be. A bit cliche ish. That's the only com that's my only complaint with that with them. Even more so even more so with then God of well, it's right there with God of Mine with Hikari. Because when she's uh Angel Woman, she's not as weird, weirdly clingy, but I guess God of Mine is a cat, right? <clears throat> anyway, Angemon turns into Holy Angemon, aka Magna Angemon in English. So there, you know, uh Holy Angemon and Takaru are extension of Gravimon's power, so he's flowing his power through them, and they're flowing it through Eldoradimon. Takaru's Digivice is on full glow. We get the silhouette of Seraphimon, the mega evolution of Holy Angemon behind him, 
And they're just angel fellas all around. At this point, angel wings start to grow from the back of El Dorotimon. Nice little foreshadow. I actually missed that foreshadowing. Excuse me, that foreshadowing er earlier. But yeah, using their holy power to give him wings, he's able to fly up from the slope and land comfortably on the ground. So there you go. Uh, the episode, of course, continues because Leo Mon, you know, gives him a nod of thanks, and we get the nice little Sasuke Cindere reaction from Gravity Mon. He just turns his head with a hmm. And while Takaru and uh, Holy Angelon are celebrating, his uh, Digivice goes off, his crest appears, and Taichi looks at his device and says, maybe the device isn't pointing to a location specifically. Hmm. Uh, and that's our episode. Yeah. Uh, today's encyclopedia, of course, was Gravimon. Ari Reggie's encyclopedia. The funny bit that, um, Koshiro said was he can make it so that Kabuterimon could sit on his shoulders because he can just make him light. Next episode is going to be Sora and Piyomon interacting with Shakuamon. You remember Shakuamon, right? From Digimon Adventure 2, where it was the the Jagress or DNA evolution of Angemon and, and Kilomon, which is a huge disappointment because Pyodramon is cool, uh, Sylphimon is cool, Shakuamon, while it is an angel thing, and if you look on, if you look up what it's based off of, I get it. It is an ancient alien artifact thing that everyone associates with being like a deity over in Japan. I get it. I totally get it. They should have had a different fusion evolution. Um, this episode, while not super detrimental, again, it was throwback to the the uh, fostering of feelings that they didn't do a lot of flashbacks of Takaru with Eldorado Mon. They didn't do a lot of that, but if you've seen it, you understand it, right? Um, and I actually, this uh, episode made me like Gravimon a lot more. Like, he was an evil D-bag in Cross Wars. So, um, all in all, I, as much as I enjoyed it, it's kind of on the average side. Although, that sneaky little hint from uh, Taichi talking about, it might not be a location. Which, I think I've been saying this whole entire time. I'm pretty sure that the devices are just leading them to where they need to go to fulfill to show that element of the crest and fulfill it. Takaru, uh, I believe his is light. If it's not light, it's hope. No, Hikari's is light, his is hope. He is, he never gives up hope and he just, he instill hope in others. Makes tons of sense, right? And they were in a hopeless land, they instilled that hope. Just like Hikari, came in through the darkness of the forest and illuminated with light, etc., etc., etc. So, all in all, with all that being said, I'll give it a 3.5. I don't like doing 0.5s, but I'll give it a 3.5 because it, it's an average episode, but it's actually pretty good, you know. So, please, let me know what you thought of the episode in the comment section down below. As always, please give me a like, a subscribe really helps out if you want to get notified of more videos like this do these every sunday please hit that notification bell share the video so others can talk you know get into discussion about these digimon adventure episodes man we only got uh six or seven left i think we only have about six left so i'm, I'm interested in seeing what this grand evil is i really hope this next episode isn't filler and i don't think Ta i don't think taichi's in it so maybe maybe we'll get maybe we'll get a better moment of phoenix mon or ho -Oh mon sorry. As always, I appreciate you all. Please be good, be blessed, wash your hands. Keep on wearing those masks. Black Lives Matter, of course. Be good to yourself and be good to others. Please don't be a jerk. And I will definitely see you next time.